in America we are told from the earliest of ages and the stages that we have rights. We also have responsibilities to those rights. The responsibilities follow us all through the ages and stages of education from elementary education to secondary education and for some of us post-secondary education or certification programs and skill path seminars and other places in which we can learn to mind our mouth and build our career. When you're in the middle part of your life and you're starting over in life because you chose a dereliction of duty to your life, to your family, that's on you. But when you're attacking a man for what he is and what he has, that most certainly is on you. You see, I may not have much, but what I have belongs to me. And you may have more, but what you have belongs to you. But when you interfered with a man's life over five years ago, my dear, you put your whole fucking family in jeopardy. Because every single one of you knows the plan. For you, but not for me. You see, I have a right to plan my life, and I have the right to be my in my life, and I have the right to do my life without one employee of any company interfering with my life on behalf of some sort of company man or some sort of military woman who thinks she's got the rights to you or to me. Every part of my life is private, except for the moment of time that I am online looking for work in my industry to move my career forward. And every time an employee of your company interferes with my right to do that, they have put your company, publicly traded or not, in jeopardy for lawsuit and legalities. You see, you can't offer a free Wi-Fi and then expect it not to be free. And you can't offer people internet and expect them to only be shopping on your store. And you cannot presume that every person in the parking lot isn't borrowing your Wi-Fi, but you choose to monitor me instead of more. Your lie was communicating to people that you've got rights to interfere with their legalities here. Your stupid bill was thinking you had the right to trust an officer of the law who's just a guy who wants to abuse here. But your company and your church and your organization and your women in the lurch are the liars of America, always trying to police me, always trying to interfere with you, and always out of line. If a person is in struggle, they are mature enough and old enough to say, hey, I notice you're walking by, would you mind helping me? I did that one evening on campus when I was trying to pull a marvelous looking dresser out of the trash thinking somebody could use this in poverty. But somebody didn't like it anymore and chose something new. And it wasn't even in the trash, it was next to it. Because it was too fucking heavy probably for someone to put it in the trash, they probably struggled just to get it out of their apartment complex. But two guys were walking by and I said, hey fellas, could you help me do this? And they said, absolutely. And I just said, I'm just not strong enough. And with that, they picked things up and with my direction, because they were young and they weren't quite thinking how it was going to work for me, they placed it upon my rollator cart. And despite my predilection, despite my discomfort, despite my challenge, I was able to remove that and move that to give it to someone who needed that. In life, we have a moment of time to make comfortable spaces for young people to gather, young people to eat, and young people to learn about the real world beyond college, not the foolish world of immaturity of college. What I'm seeing mainly in this community is a lack of education and a lack of code of conduct of a lot of people. But at the same time, what I know is that the good kids are not always out every Friday and Saturday night partying and making fools of themselves and alcohol and drugs on the street. But the minute that the pot shop moved into the college campus, literally on the Meg Drag, I knew I was out of there. God said, not anymore. Are we participating in a community that allows this or near an apartment complex owner that says this is okay with them? Because that week, somebody drove their car off into a ravine and at that moment I said, I don't want to be anywhere near a college child that has that kind of power in an automobile and that kind of money to burn in alcohol, drugs, or illegal behavior with some girl. In America, we have the right to be our age. And as a mature man of 50, 
I don't have to take the mousing off of a 30-year-old who's done nothing in his fucking life. He can't even keep a wife. And probably got fired from his job in Indianapolis because of his immoral behavior. But don't you stalk me across the state line and don't you try to tell me what to do with my time. And don't you tell me I can't buy my time until you stop harming me. But at some point you're going to face Jesus, aren't you? You're going to be called home the way God calls people home. Or at some point somebody's just going to be intolerant of your behavior and say, I've had enough of this. But here's the deal. Who do you have you had enough of? Have you put your life in order? Have you put your house in order? Have you put your things in order? Have you made your list of bequeathments? Have you decided that you had rights to people that weren't your rights at all under any law, any international treaty of human rights declaration? Or do you think because you're an American citizen and you're somebody's sibling that you don't have to follow any law at all, any order of process at all, that your emotions will govern the situation in a court of law? They won't. Because your abuse and your lies and your mistreatment and your misuse of my lifeline will get you hell in good time. 